Now the setup I've got is this. This is actually a seven meter pole, it's graphite. As you can see, it's very, very thin. It's not, done, not like those big heavy ones that you see. And uh, it's telescopic, so you can break it down and it slots into itself, okay? Um, the great thing about these is all I have to do is I actually just, I just shift my float out to an area that I've baited up and that works really well okay so that just extends out to seven meters hold it very comfortably it's very light and so it's easy to hold and it's great watching that float now the um, the float that I'm using here is an eight gram float now really this is I know it looks thin but I find this quite heavy a lot of the floats that I would use would be a lot thinner than that uh, but today because I'm expecting a bit of wind and also because there's this is a tidal river it's an estuary so that bulb there at the top gives a bit more buoyancy so that it won't be pulled away when I when I actually hold it there I only want to have that little tiny bulb showing and because there's a bulb there is a bit more buoyancy which means it'll stop from going right under if I just had one that was as thin as that all the way then it would be easily dragged under so that just keeps it so that I need to see the top need to see about that much only the rest of the floats underwater and I'm fishing on the bottom so I've got enough line I've got sorry shot put shot put I've got split shot holding it in line and down the line so that it just it weighs it down so I've only got that much showing enough split shot to keep it like that and what I've done is I put a big piece of uh, lead on the hook to start with I put that into the water and this would go under when it was uh, when when my line was too shallow so I'd keep lengthening the line until that lead weight was on the bottom and this was just sticking out the top there's about three meters not probably even more four meters of line between the hook and that float that just shows how deep it is here and then I'm fishing on the bottom so that hook is right there and I've got a little split shot just near the hook so it keeps it on the bottom and I can then just hold that in place so that um, I can hold the, the float in place. So I'm throwing out my pellet burley, my uh, sweet and sour worm pellets, and right over the top of the float. So that's going down, and the fish are coming around, and they're finding my bait. And it's a great way to fish. Just watching a float go underneath is so exciting. So I'll keep going. Okay, so I've got my small bait on. That's my... Uh, my spicy chicken on a size this is about a size 14 hooks so it's a pretty small hook right and uh, all I have to do now is just hold this out I've lined up where I'm gonna have my float in line with something on the other side so I'll put my float in and it's always gonna be facing that marker so I know exactly where I've thrown my bait before so when I put this in I've actually thrown a little bit of bait in and I'll continue to throw a bit more bait uh, burly in my Early pellets in and they will keep attracting the fish. So. so it lines up. And I'm ready to go. Think about the float is it's so sensitive I mean it's, you can see it nice and bright there but you can see there's little bites now happening what's happening is it'll go under just slightly so these are small fish just picking at that bait and you see that so this is stuff you'd never even see on the the finest of, uh, of rods because it is so sensitive they're little tiny picking things um, what I'm hoping is it'll go right under but at least I know there's some activity so I've been throwing my pelleted burley over the top and I did throw some of my bite hard burley over the top just to lay a bit of a, a carpet of burley on the bottom right where I'm fishing there so it's not you know it's not that far out two rod lengths out really is what I'm fishing but the water's reasonably deep here so that's good a little bit of flow which is good as well and now I've just got to wait for that float to go under and, uh, and strike into a fish but I'll just keep throwing in the bits of burley just to keep the interest there but there's certainly little fish <laughs> picking at that and that's something you would normally never see on the conventional rod just well the float fishing is really a lot of fun 
I mean, I just, uh, I've had quite a few bites. It's gone under a few times. I've missed. I had one um, come to the surface. I've just thrown in my, some of my pellets. I've thrown a bit upstream as well, so they float land below the, uh, where my bait is. Uh, the thing is that the, uh, the current has picked up a bit, so um, things are floating away as I, as I throw them in, so I might have to throw them a bit further upstream. Uh, the thing is that the fish will come up to find my bait, but um, it's just, it's good fun because what you can do, so I'll just, I'll just show you what I'm doing now. Okay, so what I do is, sometimes you just lift up a little bit and drop down and then hold your, your float in place. And just that movement sometimes stimulates them to bite. Um, and then you just have the, the tip of the float there so that um, it's, it's an indicator, obviously. Um, at the moment, it's, it's my movements that are causing it to, to go under a little bit, but it's so sensitive and uh, it's great fun just watching it, you know, occasionally just sort of sink right under. So, as I said, I've missed a few and, um, and these ones are so sensitive, and they're probably small fish, but they're so sensitive that I wouldn't have really got those on a rod. I wouldn't have even seen the bites, I don't think. Uh, okay, so that's, and so um, I just have to, you just have to understand that you, sometimes you can get, um, the only way to get fish is on this really, really sensitive method because just about everything else the fish won't bite on. Today is a harder day. Uh, there's plenty of sunlight. The tide is now moving out, okay? And um, really, there's no breeze at all. The top of the surface is like glass. So these aren't good conditions for fishing other than where the tide is quite high, but it's actually moving out. So I haven't got a lot working in my, uh, in my direction. So what I have to do then is uh, rely on a really, really finesse type approach. This really soft bait presentation. The fish don't know a thing about being connected to a line there. They, they're not suspicious of it because there's no weight on that bait at all. It's neutral buoyancy is this float at the moment. Well, I've just, <laughs> I've just, uh, just hooked into one on my float. The moment I put it down, it went under. So, I'll uh, just see if I can get this one in. It's... Looks like a brim. Yes, a little brim. Okay, so <laughs> this is not bad. Now I've met a, a fellow angler here who is fishing a pole as well, out to a float. And he's got all of the setup here, which is the seat. He's got a long um, pole holder here and he's got his float out there and what it's doing is he's got some dissolving bait on it so he'll let that float through and then once it dissolves off bring it back in <laughs> and I'll just show you what he's doing what he's doing is he's putting this like a putty like bait onto two hooks on this set up and you can see the, the float that he's using out there and just cast it out and then lets the float once it reaches the bottom then floats down with the current Quite amazing to watch. What's happening each time is that um, he's he's casting in. You see the float there. It um, it moves along down uh, downstream, 
has the bait on it. So he's letting it, it go down with the um, with the current, and I'd say it's it's probably just above the bottom. So it's getting you know probably about I don't know 60 centimeters off the bottom. And then what he'll do is once it gets to the end of the the trip, he'll lift it up, bring it back in, and put that dissolving putty back on.